We are going to start this list with fresh footage of an indie game which looks more AAA than a lot of AAA games. It is one of the most anticipated games in 2022, Following Frontier. It's hard to even imagine just how much time the sole developer has spent making this gorgeous looking mix of real-time space strategy and Forex company slash empire builder. My name is Peter and let me present to you this and all the other promising indie strategy games coming in 2022 and just maybe some in 2023. I have already covered many similar games, both AAA and indie, in my previous video lists, everything from story-rich squad combat tactical RPGs to high-speed RTS and elaborate 4x strategy games, link up here and below. So, Following Frontiers gameplay is a complex system which spans from designing and building ships all the way to resource collection, supply lines management, placing minefields, upgrading and specializing space stations, rescuing friends or foes, and even interrogation of surviving enemy officers. Some of this is what this fresh footage is all about. Its developer has really made it difficult to categorize this game as the gameplay is both deep and vast but again looks simple to execute and hard to plan out. Like the choices of where to harvest for resources inside plants where it's easy for you but damaging to the plant, or out there in the asteroid belt but exposed to sabotage, attacks and takeovers. For both protection and attack, you of course need a fleet, but this isn't Stellaris, it's more like Nexus the Jupiter incident, so there are small fleets of different ships where choices of weapons and crew mean a lot and can decide the outcome of battle. Another layer of complexity is peeled off when you get into the nitty gritty details of those spaceships because they are not just HP hitboxes, but complex machines with engines and ammunition stores which can be targeted to blow up or capture a ship. With so many elements and gameplay mechanics, you can be sure it's going to take you a while to master this game, but I have no doubt you will be enjoying it all the way. Its development has been slow, but fingers crossed this solo developer from Stutter Fox Studios, with the support of a very indie-friendly publisher, Hooded Horse, manages to release this space gem in 2022. Now here is another very interesting project and studio. You probably saw and heard about it before, but this is very much still an ongoing project as Baldur's Gate 3 is in early access right now. Its developer, Larian Studios, might not be considered indie due to its growing size, but it's still very much independent and self-published. This game is their vision of one of the most beloved classic Dungeons & Dragons RPGs. Originally developed by what was once the greatest RPG game studio, Bioware, which unfortunately can't rest in peace because of the necromancers at Electronic Arts, but as the saying goes, that is a story for another time. In this long-awaited sequel, we return to the Forgotten Realms to once again enjoy a story of fellowship, survival, sacrifice, but also betrayal. As this game heavily leans into the D&D systems and lore, you can choose from a wide selection of races and classes, but also create your own character from scratch. These games are both RPGs and adventures, so your character and the story shape each other along the way. There is no single ending or a single path, and that is exactly where all the replayability comes from. Larian Studios is making this game in the new Divinity 4.0 engine and it looks better than anything they have made before, including Divinity Original Sin 2. The main gameplay is turn-based tactical battles with your character and party against many different humanoids and monsters. The close combat camera offers a fantastic view as you use the environment to your advantage, cast spells, turn into all sorts of animals or monsters and break the enemies into bits. This is of course after you talk their ears off in conversations as this is a story-rich title. From one fantasy universe, let's go into another, but we will be leaving the turn-based combat behind. This is because the first man, TFM for short, is a real-time 4x strategy with pause where you start your own race, build a village and move on from there to end game with diplomacy and even raging wars. Its gameplay is a complete mix of Stardew Valley, Don't Starve Together, RimWorld and Oxygen Not Included. The developers at Gathering 3 have been taking their sweet time in publishing this game as I remember talking about it two years ago, but I don't want to nag, so let's learn about the other features. The fantasy world in which the game is set 
is filled with different biomes, all sorts of plants and animals, but also monsters. After assembling a party of your villagers, who you first gear up and train, you explore these biomes and bring back the all-important loot while gaining experience and new abilities or traits. So as you see, this is a very character-driven game, but with a high dose of settlement management with everything from construction and tech research to crafting. It will have many different modes, scenarios with unique stories and victory conditions, but also maps designed for skirmish and procedurally generated random maps for freeform fun games but also competitions, all available in both single player and multiplayer sessions while workshop support will offer an in-game map and story editor. But if you are a hardcore tinker and enjoy micromanagement gameplay, meaning you love Satisfactory Factorio or Dyson Sphere program, here is another voxel automation game for you. This one is in first person, set in space, in an infinitely procedurally generated, fully destructible universe where you can actually move what you build and it's all placed on a major grid system. Now, whether you really can violate the first law of thermodynamics, it's up to us to discover. This is Astro Colony and it is being developed by a small team called Terad Games, who want to let you become the builder and manager of an efficient and automated constellation of production colonies. Yes, there are conveyor belts and pipes, enough for all your dream designs. But unlike in most other games, you are not alone. There are actual astronauts who work for you and have to be fed and housed. There is a progression with unlocking new tech, different areas of the universe which look unique, and unexpected events and dangers. What you create, you can stack, connect, dock, and spread around the galaxy like a network. There will be a co-op mode as well as a kind of multiplayer. Fighting? Probably not. Vehicles, however, are in the game and moreover, they are modular. You can craft them in the hangar with necessary resources and pick attachments, position them, change sizes, layouts and colors. They'll be used to move on plants and to shape the terrain. We are staying in space for this next game too, but it's all about destruction rather than construction. Nebulous Fleet Command is best described as playing out your own version of real-time ship fleet warfare from The Expanse TV show. You have space warfare tactics like hiding in asteroid fields and gas clouds to ambush enemies, sensors, tracking and intelligence gathering through various electronic systems, and space weapon types to your heart's content. Missile systems, missile point defense systems, heavy hitting magnetic accelerator cannons, max for short, and the obligatory space lasers. Now to make these weapons and their hits more meaningful, in this game developers at Eridanus Industries have made these ships more than just hitboxes with health bars. They are actual machines made from many parts with armor plates strapped to their exterior, so damage to ship is per system and crew rather than just a percentage of its overall health and some battlefield repairs are doable. The built-in fleet editor will let you customize those ship elements as well as your fleet composition akin to what we had in Nexus the Jupiter incident. It's based on a point value system which keeps fleet strength in balance, but you will not know your enemy's fleet composition until you scout them out. There are no reinforcements in this game and no resources together, so you should study every weapon's compounding benefits and drawbacks to gain an edge over your enemies. I can tell you right now, I will be on this game like jam on bread. Now while staying in the realm of sci-fi, we are going to head back to Earth and into one of the most iconic 90s action movie franchises, which has been just begging to be turned into a real-time strategy game for decades. The Terminator. It's going to be titled Terminator Dark Fate Defiance. A bit of a long and overbearing, but as you say, let's not judge a book by its cover. It's advertised as a gritty, fast unit and squad combat between a faction of ex-US military members and endless legions of Sky... Well, I was going to say Skynet, but it's just not in the game's description or interviews, like anywhere. It's as if they had to pay extra for that trademark and just decided not to. I must admit, until now, I had no idea movie studios sold IPs with optional content. But I guess they do have their own version of DLCs. Anyway, there will be a narrative-driven, semi-linear, single-player campaign, while in the multiplayer you can expect to see more factions like the Resistance and possibly the Cartel. Just like in the previous game on this list, units will be damaged per components, armor and hull structure 
meaning no simple health boxes. Do note, this isn't the regular base building RTS title. You will not be gathering resources and churning out foot soldiers from barracks, but carefully managing the units you have and adding to your roster as you play through the missions. Something like ground control or world in conflict, even partially homeworld style. You could go on a limb and call it a real-time tactics game, but I wouldn't. Beyond what we saw in the trailer, there will be open countryside maps, not just urban post-nuclear ruins, although these will be where the physics-based building demolition will be most noticeable and useful. Because I know you love your indie games with some roguelike elements in them, let me present to you a space exploration and management game in which you explore the cosmos with your ship and crew and where each playthrough is going to be different. Out There Oceans of Time is not the first such game these developers at Miklo Studios have made. They had moderate success with the original Out There game and are building off of that. There will be a deep and branching narrative in this one where you search for the Archon, a cosmic villain set on dominating all galactic civilizations. You will recruit team members from all sorts of strange and quite unique looking alien races while exploring memorable locations and collecting many different resources. These you store on your ship while you can switch and pick the one you like the most. Managing your crew and ship systems is an integral part of gameplay, but there are also ground, sort of Star Trek away missions called planetary expeditions. The space exploration part is what appeals to me the most with several key resources like fuel and oxygen, while you have to keep your ship hull intact and crew morale high. There is even a planet scanning minigame, which reminds me of Mass Effect of all things, but the story missions and events are expected to be much better, which let's face it isn't a bar which requires much effort to jump over. Oh, and that was me dunking on electronic arts and the animated body of Bioware again, and I am sorry, but it just bubbles out of me like stomach acid. Now, while my gag reflex resets, and if you have been enjoying this video, I hope you won't mind me asking you to hit that like button, comment about which games look good to you and subscribe to see more such videos in the future. I will continue with a turn-based strategy set in World War II, Strategic Mind, Spirit of Liberty. It is a new game in a long franchise where developers from Starny Games keep making these highly focused and detailed historical campaigns set on specific theaters of war. The latest one is all about Finns driving back the Soviets, the campaigns of Winter War, Continuation War and Lapland War, where you are the commander of the scarce Finnish troops. Your goal is to save your homeland and your people from total annihilation, big overstatement there, while managing your small army and meager weapons. On top of that, you can also play an alternate history campaign where Germans take Leningrad and cut off the Allied aid shipments to USSR by taking the port of Murmansk and things spiral out from there. This might surprise you, but this game has more features than some have units. You have cinematics and historical characters narrating your progress, faithfully recreated historical units, upgrades, troop training and equipment management, experience and skill unlocks, 10 unit classes and heroes, HQ staff improvements, call-in support actions, unit promotions and awards, different terrain advantages, line of sight and zone of control mechanics, a complex spotting system, supply chains, and on top of all of this, two types of damage, lethal and non-lethal. As you can expect, dealing non-lethal damage to your enemies will make them surrender. I dare you to comment about some feature I forgot to mention. Now, this next game is already in early access, so you can buy and play its current version, but there is still a lot its developers at Iron Tower Studio want to add to it before its planned full release date. Colony Ship is an isometric party turn-based RPG with a detailed skill-based character system in which you and your team travel and fight through a gigantic generation ship heading towards Proxima Centaur star system. The idea is to experience your playthrough in the way you want, with many decisions, choices which have consequences, branching dialogue trees and different ways you can finish missions and quests. This ship you are on is centuries old already and it's falling apart in places. 
So not only will the others, let's call them passengers, be a danger to your well-being, but also different environments and their hazards. Add to that the fact that there is no organized crew or government, but a mix of large and small factions, all waiting to control the ship. This inevitably leads to conflict, which you resolve by diplomatic means, but also with many different weapon attacks and use of futuristic gadgets. These are carried by your 10 recruitable party members, which all have different personalities, secret plans and ideologies, but your charisma will dictate how many you can lead. There are implants which enable more skills for your characters, and these can even be upgraded. For all you fans of true base building and RTS games like Common and Conqueror, Dawn of War, Dune and Starcraft, here is one such game being made by a single developer for 7 years now. He has called it Dustfront and it is set in a diesel punk world ravaged by thousands of years of war. The focus is on a replayable single player campaign with 4 factions and gameplay which starts by collecting resources next to your base, building an army, conquering additional outposts and destroying enemy units and bases. For this, you get to use infantry, tanks and artillery with additional units in the mix. All of them have the health stat, but some also have armor. There is actually an overall global command map on which you upgrade your global command center, research new tech and prepare for your next mission. The end of your campaign in Dustfront will depend on your actions and there are different endings, story missions and cutscenes in them. The art style is quite different to anything I have seen before and it gives the game its unique appeal. The unit destruction animations are also really fun to observe and there are many different ones. Beyond the resources needed to buy units, for which there is an upper limit, there is also power as a secondary resource. You can support the developer on his Patreon page and see all the latest info and updates. When it comes to this next game, I did mention it in one of my previous videos, but there was no gameplay footage back then, so I'm going back to it now. Stargate Timekeepers by Creative Forge is based on the SG-1 universe we became most familiar with by watching the TV show which was made after the original movie. It is a real-time tactics party-based game and by the looks of this gameplay it's almost like Commandos, Desperados or the newer Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun and War Mongrels. I know a lot of players expected an XCOM gameplay system and were sorely disappointed when this footage was released, but I would say give the game a chance. It will feature a story-driven campaign across 14 missions set after the 7th season of SG-1 and show familiar and new characters. Your team will sneak behind enemy lines, use unique skills and craft perfect action plans in the tactical mode, all to unravel a time loop mystery, help the Jaffa resistance and defeat a new gold threat. Each individual team member will have unique abilities which need to be synchronized in that tactical mode to defeat many familiar Stargate enemies, but also some brand new ones. The main adventure will feature multiple potential outcomes, so by traveling back in time and replaying the missions, you will shape everyone's destiny. Another blast from the past is a full 4K remaster of everyone's favorite Egyptian city builder, Pharaoh, titled A New Era to signify its major overhaul and update packaged in a new game. Basically everything has been brought to the 21st century, well everything but the setting. As I mentioned, the resolution goes up to 4K and so do the textures. The UI has been modernized and all the additional content from the Cleopatra Queen of the Nile add-on as well as full map and mission editor are integral parts of this release. All this is being done by developers at Triskel Interactive who have made two similar city building games in a Victorian steampunk universe with the main title Lettuce which are worth checking out. In the off chance you didn't play the original Pharaoh or any of the other Impressions Games city builders published back then by Sierra Entertainment, you can also try a modern take on this subgenre by the developers of Nebuchadnezzar which I warmly recommend. But anyway, in Pharaoh A New Era you will be able to play 50 missions across 4000 years of ancient Egypt civilization and raise astonishingly complex monuments and of course many different pyramids while feeding your population from farms on the banks of the Nile. There is a lot more to the game than that, but you really need to experience it to understand why gamers get such a warm and fuzzy feeling just at the mention of Pharaoh.
Another 20-year-old franchise making a sort of a comeback, because there are games in its universe getting published from time to time, is Metal Slug. As this game, which is being developed by LA Kid Studio, is a dynamic tactical RPG with roguelike elements, it is titled Metal Slug Tactics. Its art style is very reminiscent of its origins as an arcade running gun game, so don't judge it on the graphics as these are a feature, not low effort. Main gameplay is about playing and replaying your favorite missions as much as you want and using skills you acquired to take down enemies in fun combat. After each battle, you gain precious war experience and unlock weapons or bonus perks to upgrade your team's firepower. This is a team you set up yourself, but when they are not enough, you can call in some reinforcements, like heavy artillery to support you, the metal slug unit, air raids and more. Its roguelike elements mean you will have a hard time moving forward and have to replay missions until you nail down the perfect tactical plan to combine all your soldiers and weapons into the right action chain. For the end of this list, I have two games for you which have cinematic trailers while the gameplay we can see from only a few screenshots, but they are worth mentioning. The first of these is Great Houses of Calderia. It is a grand strategy game by the developers from Resistance Games. Here the plan is for you to build your family's legacy of power and rise in the ranks of the great houses in this fantasy land full of legends and myths. Beyond just your ruler, you manage and appoint other family members to different functions who all have their own characteristics, stories and wishes. These also change over time as different events happen to them. There are battles in the game and they will be played through a real-time tactical resource management system. It's not very clear how this will function, but we will find out soon enough. Beyond warfare, there will be major and less important diplomatic events. These range from marriages and jousts to full-on court intrigue as well as other social events. Over time you will gain both a reputation and an extended family made up of descendants of those marriages. Diplomacy in this game will take both time and resources and the screenshots show there will be quite a number of different ones as well as many towns to control. This last game is smaller in scope but more involved with lots of micromanagement. Sengoku Dynasty is a mix of elements and gameplay mechanics but in essence it is a village and community builder in first person set in the war-torn feudal Japan and can be played cooperatively. It's being developed by Super Kami and has many similarities to the game Medieval Dynasty. As here you are the main protagonist and planner, you can play many roles, a charismatic leader, skillful craftsman, famed warrior and spiritual master. Apparently there will be fully engaging NPCs and you will be able to forge alliances and expand your village's influence by finishing quests. Trade was mentioned as well as romance, having a family and managing the other villagers. It will of course require a lot of time spent gathering resources, crafting and mastering weapon techniques with melee and range weapons. Sengoku Dynasty will be playable in story and sandbox mode and will let you build more than just one village. I hope that with this list I have covered a large enough selection of games for all of you to find a future favorite or two. I will make new lists with more games I have discovered, but until then you can watch all my previous upcoming game lists including AAA games and even sorted by strategy subgenres. They are set as cards on the screen right now and as links in the description. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.